As you just saw and heard, we've got Gunner back on this video. He's like that rap song, Back For More, which is a pretty cool song. So Gunner has actually agreed to do the entire lesson. So I know he's featured on my channel quite a bit here, uh, you know, playing the riff initially, but he's actually going to take us through the lesson. I'll talk through it, but he's going to play through it. So that's going to be pretty interesting. So this riff you're about to learn, of course, it's based on that 80s metal style of playing. And this has that really dark kind of older, Queensryche undertone to it and I love the older Queensryche everything they started with up to about Empire uh, those albums are just phenomenal I'm gonna have Gunner play the first part here okay this is split up into two parts He'll play the first part, we'll break that down, and then we'll go to the second part. Oh, real quick, I almost forgot to tell you guys, for my Patreon supporters, you've got the backing tracks and the tabs to this lesson is out there right now. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, guys, I've got one very simple, inexpensive tier level, and what I do, what, what I commit to, is giving you backing tracks and tabs to two lessons per month. So if you'd like to be a supporter on Patreon, there is a link in the description of this video. <laughs> Nice job there, Gunner. Okay, so that's the first part here. And guys, what I like to do as we're learning this, and I kind of just started doing this over the past several lessons, I like to call out just the power chords, or the chords rather, that we're going to be playing, and I'm going to post those. I'm going to have Gunner just play the chords without the little riffs and all that in between. We learned that foundation first, and that makes it so much easier to now throw in everything else that's in the actual riff. So I'm going to have him play the chords here, just the chords, and then I'm going to, I'll throw those up on the screen as well. Now, you'll see like A minor, E minor, even though we're playing power chords and that's not technically a minor for some of those chords, I like to put that in there anyway because that's relevant to the key that we're playing in. So here are the chords that you're going to be playing. What we're going to do now, we're going to go through this piece by piece. We're going to start, of course, on the A minor. We're going to add in the palm mutes. And this first half has a lot of palm muting. And it just gives it, I don't know, it just gives it this really awesome, just complete 80s heavy metal vibe to it. So we're going to play the A minor. And we're going to go from the A minor. I say A minor, the, the power chord, right? We're not actually playing the full A minor. Uh, but again, I just like to call that out so that it's relevant to the key. Okay, so we're going to play that A power chord. Then we're going to go to the E power chord, which would be an E minor. Now, we're not going to play the heavy E power chord, right? We're not going to play that heaviest note possible. And this is part of also what makes this so 80s metalish sounding, okay? We're going to go from the A to the E. So I want you to practice this right here, just this one part, because we're going to do a little something cool with that E power chord. <laughs> I'm doing here that little pull off that's not technically a pull off but what I'm doing is I'm releasing that that note on the fourth fret of the G string and I'm going to the second fret of that string so essentially you're going to be barring the second fret of both of those strings there and that's how you get that kind of back and forth position right you've already got that position in place on the second fret of the D and the G string so you want to hold that down already so that when you pull that finger off, which I'm using my pinky finger in this case, okay, when you pull that off that fourth fret of the G string, you've already got those other frets barred. So it's just easy to go back and forth with that. So that's that first little part and that's how I do that. Let's go over that just one more time, okay? <laughs> Thank you. 
Now here's where the rift starts getting really cool. I mean, that part was pretty cool, no doubt, right? But this is where it really just kind of gets a little bit more sinister and like 80s metalish queens, rikish, that type of thing, okay? We go from the A to the E power chord. And remember, we're still on. The rest of the power chords are gonna be on those higher strings, the D and the G string, which again, gives it that just killer vibe. Now we're gonna go from that E power chord to the F. And we're kind of going to do the same little back and forth thing with that as well. Okay, so listen to this part here. So this is kind of the same concept as what we're doing or what we did just now with the E power chord there, okay? We we played the power chord, but then we played a variation of that power chord and went back to it, and kind of going back and forth, okay? We're doing the same thing with the F power chord here, okay? Now, the configuration's a little bit different, right? Uh, for the E power chord, when you took that second note of the power chord off that fourth fret, you were barring the two frets, okay? Meaning you skipped an entire fret to get that variation, if that makes sense. Well, here, you're only gonna go up one fret instead of two frets, and that's just because of the nature of the key and the progression that we're playing here. So the F power chord that you go to, you're gonna be on three and five, frets three and five of that D and G string, okay? And you're going to go from three, five to three, four, okay? You're gonna go back and forth on that. So that gives it just, oh man, it's just this really awesome sound. Now we're gonna go all the way back to where we started with the A power chord. And we're gonna kind of run through the exact same thing. The only thing that changes with this part is how we play that F power chord. We don't do the back and forth between the variation there. We play the A the same way, right? The A minor, then we go to that E or E minor, and we're gonna play that same way, but then go to the F, okay? We're just hanging on that F power chord there. Then we're gonna slide up two frets to the G power chord, which that's gonna be frets five and seven. So it's gonna sound like this. <laughs> Part you want to practice on this is the this is the slide from the F to the G power chord. Sometimes, if you're new at playing metal guitar, sometimes you can kind of get caught. You're trying to slide. I know when you're just figuring things out, you know, it's like, oh man, I, I slid too far, I didn't slide far <laughs> enough. So I encourage you just to practice that, right? Just going from that F power chord, sliding up quickly to that G power chord there. <laughs> So let's pull everything together and then we'll move on to part two. So here is part one, everything that we just learned again. <laughs> Now let's move on to the second part of this entire riff, and actually this is going to be fairly easy, but let's listen to it and then I'll break it down. This is essentially exactly the same thing that we just played. The only difference, and this kind of makes it easier, but it kind of doesn't. The only difference is we're not doing all the palm muting, right? We don't have that choppy sound. We're just kind of letting those power chords ring out instead. And I'll share more about why I split the riff up this way. You might be thinking, well, why don't you just keep playing the other part? Because that sounds real cool. We'll talk a little bit more about that after you hear Gunner solo, because that's going to be pretty cool too. Let's just quickly go through this since it's pretty much the same thing that we just learned. But I kind of want to just take you through this uh, real quickly here. So let's play through that very first part, just playing these chords, letting them ring out. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now we've got that down, let's move on to the last piece of music here for this riff. <laughs> And here, this is pretty simple. All we did was we just played basically the same thing that we did the first time around, but this time there's there's no variation of power chords. Again, we're just playing those power chords, letting them ring out, and of course we're ending on that G. So what I want us to do before we get to Gunner Solo and our little chat that we're going to have here, uh, I want us to play the entire riff all the way through so you can hear how it sounds one more time. <laughs> Alright guys, I promised you that Gunner was going to play a solo to this thing, so I, I'm real anxious to see what he can come up with on this. But let's first have our little guitar chat. I think I said that I was going to do the chat at the end, but I want to just kind of give you a few points real quick here. I'll make this quick because I, I want to hear Gunner solo just as bad as you do. I'll save that for the end. But uh, real quick, the reason why I split this up, you know, you've got kind of like, you've got the same riff all the way across the board here, right? but in the middle, we change things a little bit. We go from palm muting to letting those power chords just kind of ring out. I think this is really important when you're writing music, when you're writing your own riffs, and you guys know, I, man, I, I encourage you so much to write your own stuff. I know it's fun to learn covers, uh, but even learning my lessons here, I want to hear you guys expand on these, on these lessons that I give you. Learn what I'm sharing with you, that's fine. I want you to do that, I encourage that, but you know, sometimes you might be learning one of Jason's lessons or Gunner's lessons in this case, and you may say, you know what, I think this sounds better, okay? Hey, try that out. I want you guys to expand on this. That is how you become a better guitarist and better musician, okay? Again, playing cover songs is fine. Learning to play, you know, Metallica's Ride the Lightning or Call of Cthulhu, that's a cool song to learn, or whatever you want to learn, and again, my lessons, but always force yourself out of that box to where you're not just playing someone else's music but you're playing your own music okay and i don't care uh what your goal is i do care what your goal is but what i'm saying is is it doesn't matter if you're playing music as a profession maybe you're in a professional cover band i know some folks that are in that even if that's the case i still want to push you to write your own stuff there's just something magical that happens when you do that and you guys know exactly what i'm talking about it also, it also builds a completely different skill level than just being a guitar player. You go from being a guitar player to really being what I consider a true, a true musician when you start branching out and writing your own music. That's just my opinion, but I don't know. I, you guys, I want the best for you. I really do. You know that. Uh, I want you guys to excel, and I believe this is a way to do it. I'm going to say it's the way. Jason's way is not the way, but I think it's a really great way for you to truly expand. So I just kind of want to harp on that. Now, on that note, real quick, and we'll get to Gunner Solo. Um, I split this up. Okay, we, we chopped it up. We had the palm muting the first half. Second half, we let those chords ring out. This is a very important lesson on its own, just this concept alone. Sometimes we get caught up into playing a riff and then repeating that riff over and over and over and over and over. When you're writing your own riffs, and this is kind of what, where I'm circling back around to, when you're writing your own music, you want to have some, uh, you want to have dynamics, okay, period. Playing the same thing over and over kind of gets dull and boring, even if it's a cool riff, like this riff we just learned, I love playing it, I could play it all day, it sounds killer, but I said, nope, let's stop it right here, and let's just hold those power chords out. That gave this riff dynamics, okay? It just really it chopped things up, and it takes the listener on a new journey now. They heard this part, and they're like, that's awesome, I love it, but now you change it, like, whoa, where are we going now? Kind of sounds similar, but, but it's different. You know, to me, it's all about captivating the listener. And again, it doesn't matter if you're a professional musician or if you're just playing in your bedroom, right? And, and maybe you're the only one listening. Well, hey, record yourself and write that riff, but then 
make some changes to it. And I'm not even talking about going from like verse to chorus, chorus to bridge. I'm talking about even within, let's let's call this the verse. Let's say what you just wrote, uh, actually this sounded more like a chorus. Let's say this was the chorus, this thing we just went through, right? Well, you've got the first half of the chorus kind of choppy, that second half of the chorus changes. And it's like, wow, <laughs> you didn't change keys, you can change keys, but you didn't, you didn't really change anything else, didn't even change the chord structure, didn't even change the progression. All you did was just, you went from palm muting to letting those ring out. Sometimes those subtle changes like that, it's enough to really just spice up the song. So I, I hope you guys are following me here. I really do. I hope this makes sense to you. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, hey, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll try to explain it better next time. But guys, you know, I, I'm, I'm just super passionate about you guys excelling, you guys writing your own music and, and implementing these little things that can just make your music pop, that can make it just, you know, just kind of stand out a little bit more. So I really want that for you guys. All right, it's time to get to Gunner Solo, but real quick, I just wanted to mention again for my Patreon supporters, you guys have the backing tracks and the tabs to this lesson. Uh, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I, I do appreciate that. Um, you'll get tabs and backing tracks to at least two of my YouTube lessons a month. That's what I commit to. And also, if you don't have my guitar courses, there are links for all of this good stuff in the description of this video here. So please check that out. But before you do that, Gunner, let's hear the solo, dude. <laughs> bad gunner does a pretty cool solo hey if you guys liked it leave a comment and if you have any questions about this video please leave a comment uh, one last point I want to make and it's actually regarding gunners solo just now you'll notice that uh, and then we'll stop I'm, I'm in talking mode today I feel like we're just sitting in here hanging out together in my studio just having a chat so I hope you guys don't mind me elaborating on some things that I feel are important for helping you excel because again, that's what these videos are all about. But um, I want you to notice in the solo and go back and listen to it again. Uh, I'm also going to put that clip on my Facebook and Instagram. So you'll, you'll see that out there. And TikTok too. I, I'm on TikTok now. I kind of just refurbish the same stuff for that right now. <laughs> but anyway, um, the solo there, you notice he didn't play a solo through the entire thing, right? So as he started out, you're like, well, wait a minute. Where's the solo? It didn't come in until later. Then we chopped it off. Then we let some rhythm go by again before we played the other solo there. So that's a really cool strategy to use. When you're playing a guitar solo, not every part of the song or that piece of music has to be filled with notes. So I just want to leave you on that note. <laughs> no pun intended, the pun's always intended. Again, it's all about dynamics, right? And Gunner, he did a good job on that solo, I thought. So I just want to leave you with that though, because it's, it's one of those things that's really important. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm hearing a guitar solo, and of course that was, that was too short of a solo or two solos, but sometimes I want to hear the rhythm breathe a little bit. So give your song and rhythms room to breathe. It doesn't have to be shred guitar all the way through. Sometimes I want the lead guitar just to drop out even if, if, if it's the middle of the solo drop out and let's hear that rhythm especially when the rhythm is, is so cool like the one we learned today all right guys that wraps it up for this lesson today I hope you guys enjoyed it until the next video you know what to do keep it metal mm -hmm.